Hello and welcome to Dukas Coffee's Week Ahead. I'm Sinead McLaughlin and I'm on the line with economist Andrew Grantham to discuss his predictions as well as upcoming events in the market this week. Andrew, welcome. Now let's begin with the NFP results from last Friday. Now, the market has had time to settle and adjust to the surprising result, but what did you think of the result? Was it as disappointing as first thought? No, you know what, when the, um, when the figures came out last Friday, you know, they were slightly on the weak side, um, you know, 140,000 or so uh, jobs added against the consensus of 230. Um, but we have to remember on these non-farm payrolls figures that they do tend to be quite volatile from month to month. And what's actually more surprising to us is that we had uh, such a long string of 200,000 uh, plus results in the prior months rather than getting this uh, this weak figure for August. You know, these are always quite volatile figures and you have to look at an average. And on average, you know, this uh, the weak figure that we saw on Friday doesn't really change the underlying theme and that is that the labor market in the U.S. is still pretty strong. Uh, the unemployment rate is still moving down um, pretty well, and uh, that's bringing the Federal Reserve slightly closer to raising rates. And I, thought, I think we saw that you know, market reaction last Friday wasn't actually uh, that strong, really, given the fact that it was such a big miss. And you know, this week, uh, you know, the, the markets do seem to be settling down and, and taking that uh, non-farm payrolls report as uh, as maybe an outlier against um you know a trend of, of generally better than expected indicators for the labor market in the US. Now US retail sales unexpectedly halted in July, unchanged from June. What do you hope to see in retail sales and the consumer spending data released on Friday? Yeah, well, the US uh, retail sales figures for August uh, are going to be uh uh, quite an interesting release, actually. So we already have a good idea um, from the unit auto sales numbers that um, that autos is going to be quite a big positive, and I think that's going to drive um, quite a, a significant increase uh, in the headline reading. We're expecting a, a 0.7% increase for August. That's uh, only slightly above the consensus of uh, 0.6%. But against that, we have also... Um, you know, quite a, a, a strong um, depressing impact from gasoline prices. We saw average pump prices are down quite a bit in August from the month before. And remember, these are nominal figures. These aren't real figures. And so that is going to weigh on the headline. And what we need to remember uh, when we look at this and, and add it all up is that because of the price decline in, in gasoline prices, that in real terms, the figures are actually going to look a lot better than they are uh, on our screens uh, on Friday morning. Over to Japan and their upcoming policy meeting. What are your expectations from this meeting and the Japanese government potentially raising their sales tax again? Yeah, well, we've seen um, comments recently that um, the Bank of Japan don't seem too um, concerned um, with economic trends recently. Yes, GDP was very weak in the second quarter, uh, revised down slightly further uh, this morning. But, you know, what we have seen is that they, they believe that this is going to come back. This is uh, a temporary um, weakness after the sales tax increase. And, you know, the expectations in the market and our expectations is that they will have to uh, to do some further stimulus further on, particularly um, if Abe does uh, raise the sales tax again next year, which could weaken consumer spending further. But it doesn't look as if that's something that they're going to do um, immediately. Now, the European Central Bank and the Bank of England both released data last week that were met with very different reactions in the market. What was your reaction, and what do you think it will mean for the euro sterling? Yeah, well, the Bank of England, I think um, it's clear that they're definitely they have definitely ended stimulus in terms of their um, in terms of their asset purchase program. That's going to be kept unchanged and slowly wound down. The ECB obviously announced. Um, a new asset purchase program, and that for at least uh, initially weakened the euro against uh, against the US dollar and slightly against sterling as well. And I think that trend uh, will continue for a stronger sterling against the euro. But what we've seen um, uh, since those meetings on Thursday is that you know, sterling has come under weakness because of uncertainty uh, over the Scottish independence vote. And that's one thing that we really need to look for uh, this week in terms of that euro-sterling cross 
the results for that vote in 10 days' time are starting to get uh, a little closer, and that's uh, leading to a lot of uncertainty around Sterling. Now, if we uh, do get the no vote coming out on top, as we expect, on September 18th, then Sterling will recover uh, against the euro, particularly uh, as uh, in the eurozone, the ECB's balance sheet is uh, is primed to start uh, increasing again. But um, yes, uh, Sterling could... Uh, could prove quite volatile uh, for the next week or so until we get those results on September 18th. Lastly, Andrew, what events in the market are you looking out for this week? Well, some of that uncertainty around the Scottish independence vote is going to be key, I think. And, you know, we've seen just this morning that um, volatility in, in currency markets has been uh, has been largely pressed on, on sterling. Uh, that vote is getting very close and we are going to get further uh, volatility in uh, in, that, in sterling crosses um, as further polls come out regarding that. So I think that's going to be uh, going to be a key this week. Um, you know, as we as we move towards that uh, that vote in a few weeks' time. Thank you, Andrew, for your insight. That has been your week ahead. Enjoy the rest of your week.